Good evening, everyone. So today we are going to discuss regarding principles of design and architecture, uh, like principles in architecture and design, or we can say design principles in architecture. Uh, this is an extended format, actually. So previously, we have gone through quite a few design principles. We have discussed regarding summing everything up that there are visual principles as well. So what Nata used to ask in 2022 was identify the four important visual principles. This year, what they have done, they have again accumulated something else with it. We will be discussing that in our next class. That is elements of design. Okay. So they are now asking, identify the four important principles and elements of design. And like all elements of design, which are quite like, you know, all together. So we have done that. Like, you know, if you go through our uh, design principle PDF, it's obviously already over there. Each and every composition that you see, you can see over there that uh, below that, uh, like, you know, or in the very next page, like corresponding to that, uh, those pictures, you can see like, you know, the design principles or the visual principles, as well as side by side, the elements of design. Now, apart from the general design principles, so visual principles are something that you see, and that is like, you know, quite prominent that that gives you a visual look and feel that that is a kind of, you know, adverb that you can add to that particular thing happening or the composition that might be something like movement, something like static, something like dynamic. These are the things that you feel from that composition, but not, they are not included under design principle. Hence, they are under visual principle. Okay. Now, apart from this, we have uh, discussed regarding design principles, which are quite prominent. A number of principles known as design principles, they are segregated in that format. And as well as we have these principles also, which are known as design principles, but this is an extended part, particularly and most importantly for structural uh, aspect. As well as also we can include it into like, you know, in terms of design as well. I will not say fully only structural, but also like, you know, this is more towards structural part. And this is what you are going to study in terms of architecture also. So without wasting any time, let's move ahead. Now, what are these principles? First of all, let us know the names altogether. Proximity, alignment, contrast, hierarchy, figure and ground, proportion. Remember these names, these names might show up in your NADA exam. And like, you know, you will be asked that to identify something from like the list which you are given somewhere or uh, there, these uh, principles also might show up. So now let's start with our very first one, proximity. So what is proximity? The principle of proximity is simply the process of ensuring related design elements are placed together. Any unrelated item should be spaced apart. Close proximity indicates that items are connected or have a relationship to each other and become one visual unit, which helps us to organize or give structure to a layout. A very simple statement, a very clear statement. So how is it? For example, in a school, if you have a group of students, okay, now we are like, you know, trying to have a head count of the number of students, the teachers, the uh, like, you know, don't quote under quote, no, I'm not a relation profiling anyone, just in terms of explanation, I'm giving this. There are group D uh, like, you know, staff wherein they clean, they keep your campus like, you know, in a nice looking manner, uh, like uh, they do some other stuff, uh, like uh, clerical jobs as well, in terms of shifting some files or something like that. And there is a headcount of number of people present in the school going due to some reason. And people are asked to like, you know, stand as per as their category of uh, work or job in that. Now the like student's role is also like student is having a role as a student or their uh, purpose on the school is to be a student. So that is their job. So now they have other. Now this is what we know as proximity in the ground. If we take an aerial view over here is your student over here is your faculty over here is your group D staff and the security personnel might be again located at some other place. This is how it's categorized. So hence you can identify and you can note that, okay, how many people are there in this sector? Are they together? Like all, all of them are there or not? Rather, if they are all jumbled up together and you need to find out and search for, okay, everyone is present or not in their respective sectors, which one will be more easier? The first one, the organized. Definitely, that's what we are talking about over here, proximity. And this is where now, this is in terms of textual thing. So why do we need like, you know, visual, some people, students ask like, you know, why not only text or why not offline class? Because these visuals right now next, which I'm going to show you, for this, I definitely need a device. If in an offline class, I need a projector to be explained. So rather than that, it's always better to have an online class where from your home you can understand 
you have a different aspects in and around you when it's a long term course we ask you to like you know show some aspects from your location your surrounding understand these principles on basis of that okay so now over here see uh, like you know principles of design proximity is the one and how we can understand or how they like you know when they are together they show or they like depict something for example all these uh, dots over here black color do dots or circles on the left hand side what you can see over here they doesn't really signify anything okay let me take the red color and mark it up so over here what you see they really doesn't signify anything but when they are all placed in a particular proportion or like particular position or in a per sorry particular orientation they do depict a triangle same way this logo without the name added as if you see this logo it doesn't really depict something but without the name if you see this logo automatically you will the name of adidas will come to your mind same way over here we are having simple cubes now when these cubes are together placed over here you can understand that this is a combination of smaller cubes to form a larger one a uh, kind of similar to a rubik's cube what you have seen the puzzle solving one clear any doubts no sir no doubt fine now over here see uh, in terms of some real life or uh, real life or practical life examples we need to understand how they are playing a role for example uh, like how they are play, uh, playing out over here over here we have the logo of unilever now in unilever they it, the logo actually depicts something and they are having several aspects okay so all these things when they are placed together they show you the uh, like you know shape of u which depicts the first letter of the word unilever without they placed being placed like this you will never be able to understand this is the logo of unilever though all the elements each and every element from a single dot is present in your whole composition which you see same kind of thing goes over here that different like you know uh, fonts are placed at different locations to depict something you can automatically tell that this larger one is the title this is the person who has written it this might be the publisher and there are some few descriptions over here uh, over here so like you know the different fonts and the different way and the orientation they are come crumbled together the similar kind of things together and dissimilar things apart from each other this is what or where we talk about proximity okay proximity in principles of uh, like principle of design is being continued over here and this is in relation with the practical life example this is like you know the resorts in maldives that you have seen so see over here all the same uh, like um, uh, i i will not say that like these ones which are located in one line they are same all these resorts are exactly the same and as a whole look at this whole like you know circular portion all sorts of these water resorts they are located at a certain point now let's assume there is a resort like kind of apartment kind of resort where you have like you know 13 floors might be that is owned by the same company who is owning this and if that is located over here will that create that this kind of aesthetic value which you see now definitely not so hence that is placed apart at some other location similar kind of things are placed over here now one more other example which i can give you guys over here let's assume these resorts which are over here they are deluxe suits uh, like you know suits i don't know what are they definitely like you know frankly speaking i don't know what are they just i am quoting a name let's assume there is something like you know super deluxe or like you know honeymoon suits so definitely they cannot be located over here they have they will look something different they are charging extra for that they are giving some extra value in return of that money like you know which they are charging so hence that will be looking aesthetically something different exterior is something different because when a person approaches and when they ask like you know for example let's assume you yourself is going to make a purchase or like you know book a resort over there now what you will look at the first when you are making a reservation you will ask your like you know uh, uh, like travel uh, agent or might be someone else if you are doing alone also you will look at the pictures and you will see exterior or interior wise like as, as a whole overall what is the look that you get from it how is it different that is how we analyze it we never go into like you know the textual part and read it out other than seeing that okay if there is free breakfast or what are the amenities we are getting if there is something extra also right apart from that what we see is that apparently what is the app like you know look and feel that we get are there any changes for which they are charging us more or they are charging us less or what is the thing so this is all about proximity clear any doubts no sir
find few other examples we'll quickly scroll through them nothing more to be discussed see all the like you know uh, th uh these are actually some, some are actually yachts and some are actually small boats also you can tell they are all like you know put in the particular location where they should be they cannot be scattered and all around there then this is actually an aspect depending upon which everything is built you need to understand this so for example there is a car parking okay now in the car parking it is let's assume it's in a shopping mall if someone drives an auto over there and tell that okay this is a parking place i will park my auto only over here is that really or practically possible though we say like you know that okay don't criticize anyone and don't uh, judge someone that is not judging but it is something like you know how we have framed things how we want things to be in terms of aesthetically as well as we have designated zones for certain things so this is what we are talking about so proximity is definitely and always present in real life as well right so this is what we are talking about now a uh, few other examples you can go through all of them back at your home yeah uh, this uh, material is already shared in your study material section just have a check out uh, okay now the next principle which we have over here is alignment so what is alignment allows us to create order and organization okay i must tell one more thing over here let's quickly jump back okay can you, anyone tell me the difference between proximity and uh, uh, your unity what is the difference between proximity and unity the proximity is more like the systematic one okay. unity is also same kind of elements will be together right so how it is uh, yeah unity means togetherness unity means togetherness uh, so you need to tell me how is it different Unity also we have studied same kind of elements will be present in the composition. They will be together in the sense of we are together. Quickly, how is it different? Just try to just try to give an explanation. You know, whatever is coming to your mind, you can give an explanation about that. Yes, no. Is something coming to your mind or no? Like right now you are blank about this. Not blank, but can't explain that. Ah, okay. I mean, the problem looks like very systematic. Fine, okay. I will tell how is the deep. It's in a very simple phase. One phase will explain everything. Unity, we are telling that similar elements will be present in the composition. At least, if you remember the very sentence, one element should be repeated throughout the composition to give a sense of that those things are together, those things are having a strong bond between, in between them. Right? Right or wrong? Yes, sir. Yes. yes sir. Right. Proximity is all about now, now here comes the very important word. Listen to this very carefully. Proximity is all about same kind of elements should be together. Difference elements should be apart. This apart was missing. And the other thing is same kind of elements should be together in a proper orientation. Hence, they will depict something. Hence, they will like, you know, show something that is not present in unity. Unity is a kind of like, you know, uh, it's a kind of feel that you get that these all are together there in the composition, sharing a bond. But over here in proximity, there will be a visual appearance of those elements combined or in like in a combined format. They will give a final look. There will be a final representation of when the, all those elements are together tumbled up. Got it? Clear? That's the difference. In a proper orientation, they will be all together at a particular zone. And they are apart from any other different elements or dissimilar ones. Clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you should understand this just because once, unless and until you understand this, you won't be able to implement this in your final exam. So when they are like, you know, asking you for your uh, four important principles and you see that, okay, similar elements, that time this thing will go back at the back of your head. Unity is there, proximity is there, what should I go with? Or might be you will mark both. But we need to see this actually. Okay. 
Now, uh, let's quickly move on. Okay, alignment allows us to create order and organization. Aligning elements allows them to create visual connection with each other. Now, over here, see the uh, understanding about alignment. See, alignment, the, these all square-like boxes which you see, they are all placed together. Over here, proximity is not present because they are all placed at a certain zone. They are all placed close to each other itself, but they are not aligned in a certain direction or in a certain way. Hence, they are not depicting what they should be. For example, it is more clear when you see this. Proper alignment, mixed alignment. All these smaller squares are placed together itself. They're not quite apart from each other or there is no third, third element in between them, right? But they are not aligned. They are not aligned in terms of, for example, if there is a line over here, the other square is not laid on that line or it is like, you know, located at some other angle or distance. So this is all about alignment. You will see some examples over here, how alignment occurs in terms of real life examples. For example, the sitting orientation in uh, like, you know, in a stadium. Okay, over here again, alignment matters in terms of how, let's assume these fonts are arranged over here and this font, it is arranged in this perpendicular direction. Hence, giving you a sense or feel of like, you know, uh, that th this might be the name or this might be something highlighted over here. Hence, the work of alignment comes into place. Not only that, see this other like, you know, uh, once uh, how they have been placed like this normal text. It gives you a sense or feel of from which side should you read and where one starts, where it ends. So you should go in this direction, start from this one and then move on to this. So this is all about alignment. Okay, over here we have an example of alignment of stairs, how they are placed. Over here again, like, you know, alignment of different objects in terms of staircase, in terms of uh, like different textures which are present and how they are all aligned next to each other giving you a perfect aesthetic value of the same. Okay, this is the best example of alignment again, where you see in a foot coat, uh, over here written as footprint, like, you know, this might be the name of a certain zone, but we normally call it as foot coat, where you have all this eateries and all like at the top of a shopping mall. Over there you go and notice each of the tables are located in a particular aligned position, which like, you know, in which you are supposed to keep it, where you are supposed to sit, and have your lunch or dinner or might be something else. Okay. okay. Now, one of the most important things which we already have discussed and we are kind of revising it because this is a very important aspect depending upon which, uh, like, you know, you can see everything, you can understand everything without this, you wouldn't have been able to like, you know, do any of your studies or neither you wouldn't have uh, been able to see yourself at all. Okay. So this is contrast. Now, what is contrast? Uh, who is going to answer this? What is contrast? Uh, sir, the contrast is mixture of two or more elements mm -hmm. together. Maybe uh, from the different backgrounds, maybe it can be negative or positive effects or, or different in textures, uh, backgrounds, colors, and many more things. Yeah. You are describing it in a wrong way, actually. Contrast is not two like two or more, two or more elements of the different uh, design and size. There, it is Tyros. not. It is not like always two or more elements. Or, don't describe it in that way. Talk about in simple words. What is contrast? We are asking for what is contrast? Contrast is the difference between any two or like you know you see any in real world or in virtual world. It's the difference between any object, any line, any shape. Uh, sorry, uh, it's the difference between any object that you see in terms of line, shape, color, or might be anything. When the two things or two particular items, they create a difference in between them due to which you can identify them like, you know, I, uh, as like, you know, uh, different objects or separate identity. Then we tell that there is a sense of contrast. It is contrast due to which you can see the word contrast on top of this particular background. If I would have used the same exact color writing contrast on this background, then there would have been nothing visible. Very similarly, if for example, this is a whiteboard. Now on this whiteboard, if I'm writing with a black pen contrast, it is due to like, you know, the black writing on the white, you are able to see this. Without this, you won't have been able to see it. For example, if I would have written with white on top of white, there wouldn't have been any particular difference. 
So hence you wouldn't have been able to see it. Now this, how this contrast is created with the help of what is contrast created without which we cannot understand any contrast. Yes. Quickly come up, without which we cannot really understand any contrast. What brings in the effect of contrast? Light. Light, absolutely. Without light and shadow effect, you won't be able to see or understand anything. Okay. Might be real or virtual, doesn't matter. Contrast is the, uh, like, you know, the exposition of opposing elements, opposite colors on the color wheel or value light and dark or direction, horizontal and vertical. It might be anything else as well. Line, shape, it can be anything, anything at else. The term, depending upon which you compare two objects, that is what is creating the contrast. Now, why I told about light and shadow without which, because light and shadow is the basic necessity without which we cannot see or differentiate between two objects. That is the very basic. Today, assuming, don't assume any lights coming from the window because there are several rays coming up. If there is a very tiny, like, you know, small bulb also, like, uh, illuminated in your room, that is also creating light. Let's assume if there is a pitch black, like, you know, room under inside which you would have been placed. And if there is a table, if there are different furnitures, if there is you, without a single ray of light, you won't be able to see anything. That is why light and shadow we told at the very beginning, because that is what, or that is the uh, element from which contrast is created. Okay. Contrast allows us to emphasize or highlight key elements in your design. Now, this emphasizing or highlighting of key elements in design is known as what? What is the design principle that relates to this? What is the design principle that relates to this? Quickly. Emphasis. Emphasis. Absolutely. So this is what we are talking about. You should be able to relate things real quick. As soon as you see something, now this is in terms of text. When you see a composition, when you see something, you now similarly, you should be able to relate at the back of your head how those things are working in hand in hand with each other. Okay. Now, here are a few examples of contrast, how one object is creating a sense of contrast with the other. In between these two, low amount of, like contrast is there, but it's less. Same goes for these two, less contrast. But when comparing this to this black one, high amount of contrast. When comparing this background with this, highest amount of contrast in this whole composition, what you see. So this is contrast in value. Now, what is value? Uh, I guess we have told in short, we will discuss color theory, but at that time we will discuss once again in revision of color theory. Right now, what is value? Value is nothing but the tint and shade of a color. Okay. So have we discussed this tint or shade? Have I shown it to you guys? Anyhow? No. Okay. So tint or shade of a color is nothing but, for example, today, Black and white are no colors, okay? Uh, or let's 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 keep this for our next class. We will discuss it in color theory. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. So just in terms of text, I will tell you of what is it or little meaning. Value is nothing but increasing the darkness or brightness of a composition or of a particular element. What do you see basically? So increasing the brightness or darkness. Increasing the brightness is known as adding tint. Increasing the darkness is known as uh, like you know uh, tint and uh, adding shade. Increasing the darkness is known as adding shade. Okay. So this is higher value or lower value. This is how it is described. And since like, you know, it is in black and white, this is what we are talking about. Contrast in terms of value. Now this can be in terms of if you see other color and there is a bright part of it, dark part of it, then also it is contrast in terms of value only. Okay. Contrast in terms of size, very clear. What you see over here, nothing to be described. As I was telling before, and contrast, you see, again, the very example that I was looking for, contrast in terms of value. It is pre, like, you know, completely described over here, how you are seeing the contrast in terms of like, you know, contrast is there in terms of different color, but due to the increase or decrease of value. <coughs> contrast in terms of weight. Now, what weight is this? This is visual weight. This is not a real weight that you see. The way this, uh, like, you know, thing has been written and it has been placed, it shows that this is actually looks, it gives a look and feel that it is more bulkier in comparison to the things that is over here. Same goes for when you try to understand symmetrical and asymmetrical balance, how you understand like, you know, there is a visual, uh, like, you know, weight is more or less, same way you understand weight over here. 
contrast in placement. Uh, so this is how it's done. Like, you know, for example, one object, now this is in terms of color as well, but why placement? Because similar objects, usually what we look like, let's assume in a market, you have gone to a fruit shop and in, uh, you see like, you know, let's assume one very red apple placed in between yellow colored mangoes. So that is what we are talking about placement. Same way, these are red tomatoes and in between them, one green tomato is being placed. Hence, like, you know, we are talking about the placement. But over here, as well as there is a contrast that is created due to color. On the right hand side one that you see, this is an exact example of contrast in terms of placement. Advantage of using contrast. Uh, without contrast, a design piece may appear like static, uninteresting and hard for the reader to access because it is not immediately clear what uh, to look at first. Now, I must tell, tell over here, this word is wrong, actually. It's not without contrast. It should be with less contrast. A design piece should be. Because without contrast, there is nothing present on your screen. It's completely blank. Either it's black or it's white that you see. Nothing else on that particular screen. Clear for contrast? Any doubts? No doubts. Fine. Now what we have is hierarchy. So what is hierarchy? It's nothing but the proper orientation or a systematic orientation of a, uh, like, you know, of a set of objects. The principle behind how to develop a hierarchy is pretty straightforward. Uh, first, a designer must decide what is the most important element within the design and make the most prominent uh, one like, you know, to come first or something like that. This is called creating a focal point uh, or it is not first actually, it can this most prominent one can be at the center of the composition as well. Where the reader's eye goes first or in terms of hierarchy or primary message. Now there can be a focal point, okay? How the things have been oriented or placed, there can be a focal point. When there is a focal point, you need to look for emphasis. There might be emphasis present. But usually when you are looking for a focal point, <coughs> that is located in the center of a composition, first thing. Secondly, there might be a focal point within similar kind of objects as well. Okay. Creating less amount of contrast and there is nothing very particular where your eyes are attracted towards. Hence, though there is focal point, there might not be emphasis. Try to identify these things when you are given a composition in your exam. Okay. From these, uh, from there, a designer must decide what is the second most important element which will become the secondary message. The third most important element, which will become the tertiary element and so on until all the elements of design have a, have a considered level within the hierarchy. The main message to understand is that careful consideration is needed to ensure all elements of a design are purposely placed within a structure. It is not just uh, about making things look pretty. Okay. Now, uh, how to determine hierarchy? Go through this whole text. If there are any doubts, you can ask in the next class. This is nothing but how you should look at it and how you what will be the step-by-step -step procedure. But this is just in terms of textual format to explain you. Normally, for example, you see this composition and you, uh, you, 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 you can identify automatically from here that there is a sense of hierarchy because things are placed like, you know, giving you a sense of uh, that they are placed in a particular table or a format where one thing is placed before each other. They're not placed parallel to each other. They're placed in a certain way, which gives you a real good feel and look that it is like, you know, that it, it, uh, how it is really possible in practical life for these things to be placed. And there is a central uh, particular item, which is highlighted. Okay. Uh, a good hierarchy is, a cle uh, is clearly evident in the recipe spread. A uh, large potato, uh, a large, sorry, uh, my mistake. A large photo of the dish is used as a focal point and the secondary message is the second largest shape on the page, which is the recipe's name. Okay. Color and size ha uh, has then been used to organize the remaining content in a clear, concise and well-structured manner. Few other examples related to how like, you know, things are shown and uh, what is being actually trying, uh, tried to be shown over here. A travel, like, you know, a travel journey or like something related to travel wherein you are shown some uh, road stops on your particular journey. These are the places you can stop and make a visit. And so these are the things where uh, in terms of textual format, which you should look for. 
and this kind picture is actually kind of a thumbnail so how on youtube you see a thumbnail you click on that video and you open it may make feeling that it might be interesting you see the title and you see the thumbnail same way over here this is kind of the title or uh, like this is kind of the title these are the content of it and this is the thumbnail thing okay now over here see hierarchy is very prominent in south indian temples how the orientation like you know of the top part of the temple you see uh, Bruj Khalifa is one of the biggest example of hierarchy of how like you know different stories are placed on top of each other and how they go to the top and it becomes like you know the thinnest at the top okay similar other examples over here go through them there is nothing to be discussed in terms of this example rather than you seeing and understanding and if you feel that there is a contradicting point questioning it for it to be better understood Hierarchy in terms of like, you know, fighter jets showing uh, or marching on here. Okay, next thing is figure and ground. So figure ground perception refers to the tendency of the visual system to simplify a scene into the main object that we are looking at. The figure and everything else, the, uh, and everything else forms the background or ground. So in figure and ground is nothing, uh, nothing other than, I hope you remember that there was a lady with an umbrella in emphasis. Colorful umbrella with like, you know, the background yes, yes. almost dark rainy day. So that over there, what is the figure? The figure is actually the umbrella, what is being highlighted. Rest all is the ground. This is what we are looking at. Okay, let's see some examples. Over here, you can see how this like, you know, uh, mostly uh, like the chairs. Uh, it is not actually the like the chairs units. It is something similar. It's being placed and there is a simple ground which creates a contrast. Hence, it is identified very prominently. Same kind of thing goes over here. Few things are over here as well. See how the figure and ground has been created with Batman and the Joker. And again, that same thing is like, you know, being the, uh, like these two colors are acting as the background as well. Okay. Few other examples in terms of what you see over here in general is a tree with two birds. On the other hand, there is a simpanji and uh, there is a lioness over here as well. Now over here, how see the particular bed in this white color, very shiny, very prominent with this pillows is actually what your eyes are looking forward to. And that is what is drawing your attention. This is what your figure in this whole composition is. Rest all what you see, including these lights, including this window, including the background curtain, everything is coming under the ground. Similar examples over here, go through them, have a look at them really uh, like, you know, carefully and understand how things are really acting, how they are like, you know, being placed. Uh, this is the very last thing, I guess, uh, that is proportion. So what we are having over here is proportion. Proportion is an art in the relationship of two or more elements in a composition and how they are compared to one another with Sorry, respect to size, color, quantity, degree, setting, etc. That is ratio. When two or more elements are put together in a painting, in a, a relationship is created, this relationship is said to be harmonious. When a correct or desirable association exists between the elements. The, this refers to the correct thing and distribution of an element, which then creates good proportion. Good proportion adds harmony and symmetry or balance among the parts of a design as a whole. See over here, some of the uh, great examples of proportion, how a particular uh, like, you know, idea or concept is trying to, uh, is being tried to be depicted over here. Okay. What uh, principles do you see over here? The very first thing that we have discussed. Or symmetrical balance. Symmetrical or asymmetrical? Asymmetrical. Definitely. Then why you told symmetrical? This is the very example. No, which... I told. Huh? Yeah. Achha, you okay? My my might be there was audio issue. No issue. Uh, or might be I misheard it. Okay, sorry for the scene. So yeah, definitely there is a symmetrical balance that you see over here. Okay, few other uh, compositions in terms of so proportion is very important in terms of this. For example. This, uh, like, you know, swing in comparison with the bed or might be something else in the room is small. But the closer it is to you, the larger it will look. We need to maintain this to understand 
or to when we make a composition to make it look real. This is all about proportion. Few examples over here as well. Less elements but badly managed proportion. See over here, less elements are there. There are not much elements. But how this guy, like, you know, in terms of how these uh, lamps are placed, where they are placed and how, what the sort of orientation that has been throughout the room makes, will give you a kind of cluster bobic feel over here. It will, the same room with the color, with the orientation of the objects, it can give you a sense or feel of that the room is larger and like, you know, it's kind of relaxing. The same room with the changing color and the way objects are oriented, they will give you a feel of that it's kind of cluster bobic. Okay. Highly contrasting elements, but rightfully managed proportion. Name of the structure, where is it located, who has made it? It's Walt Disney uh, Hall. Yeah. Walt Disney? Walt Disney Hall. Concert Hall. Where is it located, Mac? I don't know. Los Angeles, California. Who made it, Arya? Architect. Arya, who made it? Something law of Gary. Frank Gary. Frank Gary, yeah. Architect Frank Gary. Walt Disney Concert Hall, Los Angeles, California. Architect Frank Gary. Fine. Uh, that's all the end to this particular PDF. Uh, so, students who are watching this class in form of a recording, that's all for this particular session. Make sure you let us know if you have any doubts. Contact number is with you guys and uh, make sure you go through this. Understand each of these aspects. If you at some point, this is for everyone. If you feel that like, you know, this thing, the explanation was quick and you are not able to relate it with the example, like, you know, example or the visuals that you see, go back for everyone, for you guys also who are present over here, go back to that place, listen to it carefully again, then try to relate it. Very simple things, very simple to understand. Just you need to relate it with practical life example, which are things which are around you, things which you see over here, and then finally implement it with the final composition or the options which you get in your final NATA exam. Before that, definitely you will be implementing it in the mock test over here. So we will be also having a check if you are able to do it in the right way or not. That's all for this particular session, guys. Thanks a lot. We are ending the recording. Again.